Hi, welcome to the coffee table. I'm Mina Malik Hussain, and we've got a super show for you today. You might remember that a few weeks ago we had restaurateurs on the show talking about the food industry, but now we're bringing you the inside scoop. So joining me today on the set is Basim Mahund, who is a Cordon Bleu trained chef. You might have seen, I'm sure you've seen him on TV doing his cooking shows. And we've got Dr. Farzeen Malik, who is a nutritionist and a real doctor too. <laughs> Hi. Hi, thank you so much for being with me thank on the you. show. Hello, how are On you? this monsoony day. Yes, yes. it's been mm -hmm. raining cats and dogs I all know. day long, Ridiculous. all night long. Yeah. But you know, this is, this is what it is now. This is, this is our weather. Global warming, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, Basim, tell me, um, you used to be a lawyer. I used to be a lawyer. And now you're a chef. Yep. How did that happen? I mean, since a very young age, I was very intrigued by the culinary arts. Mm -hmm. And um, in Pakistan, people actually look down upon the fact that people are chefs mm -hmm. because they, in our local language, call them Bavarchi. And of a Bavarchi is a person who's actually a line chef. So, mm -hmm. people don't know about the concept of having a sous chef right. and the head chef. Mm -hmm. And trust me, head chefs make more money than bankers out there. Oh, ah. yeah. Hmm. So my father, my family, they're all lawyers and hmm. we had a law firm and I was the only son. So everyone had expectations of me to take over. And I did my law. But one fine day I just told them, I was like, listen, I just can't do it. I mean, I can, uh, mm -hmm. but you won't see a smile on my face for the next 50 years. Wow, 50. Yeah. Yeah, that was I mean, not exactly I mean, not I mean, 10 I, or I, I plan on living for the next 50 years. I mean, <laughs> we don't know how life turns out. So they're like, what would you like to do? I was like, I want to be a chef, but I don't know how. Mm -hmm. But then I think luck mm -hmm. and God plays a part in your life. Right, of course. I just got a call one day from a TV channel because they heard about my cooking and my dinners. Because mm -hmm. I used to have these dinners at home, 25, 30 people. I used to cook for them six So nice, meals. so sort of like a supper club. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like they heard about it. They're like, would you like to come and do like I, an I don't episode? think we're going to really believe him because, until we have. I know, we really haven't, we haven't been to the supper club. Yes, we, we don't know. Soon, yeah. soon, 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 yeah. <laughs> so then I just started a show with them and six months in, uh, into the show, I just realized uh -huh. that uh, it's actually going good and there's a lot of potential here, but I wasn't very happy with the traditional ways these things go in Pakistan. Because and the traditional way is you have somebody is, there who just cooks. No, no, no. No one shares my screen with me. That's rule number one. Because okay. what people do over here traditionally is that everything's cut in front of you. Mm -hmm. It's ready to be just, you know, mixed and integrated in the recipe. And right. they cook and then they just That's dish it true. out. My terms and conditions were very basic. I was like, I'll do everything live from scratch. They're like, you huh. can't do it. Why? I'm like, I can. I mean, mm -hmm. if my timing is good, if mm. I can, you know, execute the dish with justice, why not? Mm. Because the point of cooking on TV or the point of teaching people isn't that you need to show them a dish and tell them, yeah, khale, like you should eat this recipe. That's what right. they say in our Pakistani right. media. Right. The concept behind teaching people is to teach them from the grassroots level, mm. to tell them how you need to cut a tomato because there are multiple ways of cutting a tomato and it's, it depends how you actually use yeah, that yeah. particular cut and the texture changes completely. So yeah. every dish was actually cooked from the start, basic mm -hmm. to the dish out point. Mm. But then I realized there's a lot to be done in this industry in terms of educating people on the food. That's super important. Hold that thought. I yeah. just want to sort of ask Dr. Fardeen a few questions. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Dr. Fazeen, you are an MBBS doctor mm -hmm. and then um, you went into the nutrition side of things. Mm -hmm. well, so I've, what is that? I'm really interested in people's trajectory. I, you I'm, start at point A, but you end up at point B and I find that really fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm basically, yes, a doctor. But then uh, I was going to England for my FFR, which uh -huh. is actually a degree in radiology. Oh. And then I found out that there was a whole thing advertised for doctors to take up diet and nutrition. So ah. I opted for it and since then it's been uh, my thing. And yeah, it's, I'm, I'm very passionate about it mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And um, it is, um, it is very, it's very interesting to, you know, um, it's very interesting and nice when people come up to you and mm -hmm. they're more it, with the program, they're into fitness, health yeah, yeah. and looking after themselves. And uh, we were uh, to start with, with my background of being a doctor. I think that I would support the idea of preventive medicine, which is more ah, like to keep okay. oneself away from mm -hmm. disease, one step back mm -hmm. from disease and, uh, you know, be healthy and fit. 
-hmm. It's not about looking thin. Yeah. It's about looking fit, fit and feeling fit inside. That's a really important distinction because a lot of times people feel that if you look a certain way, if you if you're overweight, yes, or you're then they judge you're you for curvy, that. Yeah. Then you're not fit. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. evidently not true. No, that's not true because mm. uh, as you might have seen, a lot of people with size zeros have had major, major problems mm. with. Uh, uh, b such as problems in birth and problems in having right. uh, having being pregnant again right. and you know so and even things like blood pressure i imagine and anemia and vitamin d deficiencies and... Oh. which exactly. actually sink down to your bones right. so uh, a lot of things are happening so the idea of size zero is of course out now nobody mm. does that anymore even the models are more more voluptuous and more mm. curvy and this is this is what a female body is about yeah. but uh, uh, but all in all yeah i really enjoy what i do Right. Yeah. And you've been doing it for over a decade now. Yes, it's been, I just, I was telling you in the dressing yeah. room that I've lost count now. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's been so, about... Um, so what was it like starting out? Because this sort of, it, it's much more prevalent now, you know, people are really conscious about what they're eating, how they're eating, where it's being sourced, sort of more sort of health conscious, I think, now than it was, you know, back then. Have you but, seen a shift? Uh, that's that's right. There has been a shift, mm. but then uh, you know people are not doing it right as well. They are ah. following almost everyone. You know, someone mm. says something nice, and they start following that person. Right. They need to really, you know, the, the way they uh, figure out their clothes and the beads on the embellishments on the clothes. The w women go for necklines and stuff. Mm -hmm. They should also, you know, do some sort of uh, some sort of background checks every uh, on the stuff that they're having like a lot okay. of people are having vitamin b12 injections mm -hmm. for weight loss mm -hmm. that's not on because vitamin b12 loss, okay. can uh, is the is the front uh, uh, card that they're using behind it is the beta hcg which is not okay. good for health so a lot of people are suffering on the shortcuts people are into shortcuts they want mm. a shortcut like basim exactly. was just saying they want all the vegetables done and you know everything done and the chef just comes and puts in everything and must say while there is more to it about washing how you wash a certain vegetable how you actually peel it you know really? uh, certain ways mm. yes mm. he would and be able to tell you thing better called cross contamination people don't know about yes yes, yes. yes. So exactly in pakistan people go like oh we ate outside we're not feeling well there's something wrong with our system happened? yeah right. there are two things actually that make you feel sick uh -huh. the first thing is actually you're not used to the amount of spices right mm -hmm. so what happens is if you have a lot of spices your body is not used to it it goes into shock and then you start throwing up and mm. you have mm -hmm. xyz problems mm. The other thing is cross-contamination, and I can bet people don't even know what cross-contamination is. Very important point, yeah. by yeah. the way. Man. What cross-contamination mm -hmm. is, let's just take this cup mm. and this glass, right? right. This mm -hmm. mug and this glass. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if we have a counter, mm -hmm. we need to first differentiate that what we're actually going to prepare over there right. before we're cooking. Mm -hmm. So, people don't know this. There are actually four different types of boards when you're cooking. There's a red board, there's a green board, there's a yellow board, and there's a blue board. Oh, oh. So, so you should actually have colored bowls. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So every we board just has have a the same kind. Yeah. 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 <laughs> every board has a reason behind it. Right. So the blue board is actually used the least, especially in Punjab, because we don't have a lot of seafood over here. Mm. Oh, so, so never... blue for the for the sea. For yeah. seafood, for water. Yeah. How clever! Yeah. 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 Aqua. Mm -hmm. Yellow mm -hmm. is for food which is ready to eat, which means okay. chicken which is sautéed, fish which is ready, and if you want to cut it into pieces before you plate it, so you use the yellow board, or for example, cheese. Okay. Right. And the red board is for raw food, uh -huh. which means meat, beef, any type of protein. Hmm. Sushi. Sushi. No, <laughs> then sushi goes again back to the blue board. Oh, if it's right. raw. Okay. Ah, and yes. if sushi, mm. a part of sushi which is raw, which you can eat as uh, as it is, as it mm. is, mm. you 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 assemble it on a yellow board. Aha! Uh -huh. Interesting, uh -huh. Mr. Bond. <laughs> and then the green board is for vegetables. Wow. So okay. that's how. And so yeah. when you start mixing boards. So, this is so eco-friendly. Yeah. yeah. The green yeah. for the And it probably yeah. makes it easier to compost things later on yes. as well. Because you, you know, know what which, you're doing. What yeah. That's Th another that's thing. That's why they're colors. That's the yeah. compost thing. Yeah. You need to stress upon them, you guys. Yeah. 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 So like, you know what happens is in Pakistan especially, so when I go for training people in restaurants, because I train right. restaurants also. Okay. So what you see over here, they have this one whiteboard. Mm. They're like, Hum to, we, we ah. cut everything on this board. Right. Yeah, and with the same knife yeah. as well. Uh -huh. You, I mean, there's this sanitizer called D10. You don't use that to clean your hands, but that's right. that's for your utensils and all the cutlery. Wow. It's like okay. a spray. You don't have to go every time wash your thing. Okay, okay. Just you know, sanitize it, clean it, and then just start cooking. But then you have to sanitize it. And yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. really think People don't even know what a D10 is over knife. here. A D10 yeah. is a specific culinary sanitizer which you right. need in your kitchen. Mm, so okay. what usually happens is people use this one long board in a chef's uh, kitchen. 
which is very clean over here but they don't understand that you cannot you know mix and match things over here so right. that's where they yeah. go wrong what happens is for example if i am cutting raw uh, yes. raw yes. chicken mm. and raw vegetable mm -hmm. but if both the raws mm. react together mm. we mm. have a chemical reaction which goes here mm. and then even after cooking like salmonella jumping across yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> that's, yes. that's exactly what i was going to say yeah. mm. salmonella is harbored in meat and stuff yeah. and mm -hmm. when it cuts when 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 people cut it the chefs cut it they actually uh, introduce it into the crevices and the cuts on the board of the chopping board and when right, you're right. chopping your of your vegetables on the same board it gets contaminated yeah. by mm. that yeah. exactly and uh, then when you're uh, serving them steamed or you know just boiled it mm. doesn't go away yeah and then so, the another problem over here is people don't understand that when you talk about marinating your food or mm. marination mm. Mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. done on the counter yeah, yeah. Right. you need to age your meat you need to marinate your meat in the fridge first of all mm. secondly we have a lot of problem in pakistan why because if you go to, uh, if you go buy meat mm. you see all these animals which are actually slaughtered hanging mm. yeah yeah, in, yeah in the open air they just put like uh, a cloth on top of mm. it to just you know prevent the flies from sitting yeah, on it yeah, but yeah. that's not how it should be done if you go to the other countries international standards say that once an animal has been slaughtered in the right way when you're actually cutting the meat it's done in a controlled environment so the temperature of that big room mm. would be around 10 degrees mm. which means you're actually sitting in an egg, you're sitting in a refrigerator mm. where the meat is being cut but that's it's really ideal packed. isn't it is it how culturally possible is it for us to actually do these things at like the average butcher it is you know how much out of his little sort of shop i mean that's what he's doing right because mm. there's a reason behind it they i mean as i say there's a method to every madness in this world yeah. right yeah. you you cannot just you know yeah. hopefully yeah. Yeah. you can just not keep a M chair over M. there yeah. and just you know cut your animal and you know prepare the meat and give it out right. that's why people have laws sanctions on yes. these people SOPs. and sops and all these you know food authorities that come yeah. and go mm. so the food authority it's the food authority's responsibility to either facilitate Correct. them Agreed. right So what happens is right now you see open markets they're taking rents from all these mm. butchers and everything mm -hmm. right might as well make a controlled market yeah. in which yeah. you give them a place and you just ref you know a condition the place you don't even need to actually put the refrigeration methods over there so for example if someone comes up to me they're like we are opening a restaurant mm. yeah. so we tell them there are two options mm. either you get a very big fridge mm. either you make a cold room So now what is a yeah, cold room? Yeah. A cold room is a manual air conditioner which is actually made yeah, and it's there's just like a yeah, room a, sized fridge. Yeah, so mm. there's just a pipe going in mm. which throws in cold air and mm. the temperature is maintained. Mm. So obviously you can the government can do that because the government is already taking rent from these people. Right. Right. And now our food authorities are sort of more mm. on the ball with their raids of restaurants and yeah. sort of it seems like they're really sort of getting into all of that but we're just going to take a quick break yeah. and come back and we have a little surprise for you of the culinary variety so <laughs> you know hurry back we'll see you Hi, welcome back to the coffee table. We're talking about food and we're having a glorious time and we're about to eat some real food. <laughs> yes, my favorite thing. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, chef. Yep. What have you prepared for us today? That sounds so much like Yes. Yeah, what? I mean, I feel like I'm <laughs> in the Australian kitchen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is like chef's table. Yeah. Happening over here. Okay. So so if I'm going to hazard a guess, it mm. looks like a take on scotch eggs. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> I watch a lot of cooking shows. I think that was his line. Do it. Not <laughs> yours. <laughs> no, but excuse, don't take, don't take my victory from me, Doc. Right. Right. Okay. So please have some and let me know how do you like it. Or eat on national television. Why not? That's the point of keeping it over here. I mean, only if you guys do it too. Okay. 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 Fine. We'll, we'll, we'll take. Okay, one. but first tell us what it is. Okay, fine. First, let me talk about it. First. Yeah. Okay. So what I did was I did a take on scotch eggs. Yeah. But so what are scotch eggs? First, tell everybody what scotch eggs are. It's a form of eggs in which you actually you know, redo the whole thing. But let mm -hmm. me tell you what I've done over here. Okay. okay. So what I've done over here is we just took some eggs. Okay, right. I'm going to do it like a cooking show. Yeah. Do it like a cooking yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> so we just took some eggs, eggs. over here and we boiled it. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So like the perfect time to boil the egg is 10 minutes or 8 to 10 minutes. It depends how much you want. So like mm. for example, if you do it 8 minutes, mm -hmm. the egg yolk is runny uh, for 25% and 75% is done. Okay. Right. 10 minutes means it's completely well done. Right. Anything above 10 minutes, you're not doing justice to the ingredient and you're actually getting this nice blue line which is actually not healthy for you. 
That's where it's kind of gross so coagulating. Yeah. Ah, and that's, see, see, and that's have, where actually your stomach goes also. bad because yeah. you don't take those eggs. What is, what is protein coagulating for the people who don't know what that yeah. is? If you heat the protein for more, it yes. sort of clumps up together. Yeah. And, and becomes it, tough. Yes, it becomes tougher to on, for, on digestion. And, it's, and the nutrients also sort of... Are no, the nutrients remain the same, okay. but it's tougher on digestion. Why would you want something which is heavier to digest mm. and you would and burp you the whole day long? Well, right. Good, right? Yeah, it causes belching. So <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. Nobody yeah. put it that way. Let me scare the hell out of you. <laughs> so whenever you eat, it should be, you should be in your happy place rather yeah. than like, yeah, yeah. oh my God, I feel... I don't what feel, the hell yeah. happened yeah. to yeah. my... Yeah, I mean, I hate that. It shouldn't be an assault on your body. Exactly, you should feel happy, you should feel fresh. So right. coming back to it, my cooking show is yes. going yes. on, on the coffee cooking table. Show. I'm sorry, I'm taking over. <laughs> so I mean, so I boiled the eggs for right. like eight and a half minutes because mm -hmm. I had to scoop it out because mm -hmm. if it's too well done, mm -hmm. the yolk is going to stick to the membrane of the right. white part. Right. Then we just caramelize some tomatoes with some uh, garlic, like okay. two cloves of garlic. In so what, what, is, what is the process of caramelization? Okay. You're getting all the so, info now. Okay, so you all ways. are going to kill it in the kitchen. The first way is the French technique where you actually take off the skin. But the problem is when you take off the skin, what happens is... Uh, but don't you have to blanch to them to be well, able to take to, in order to take yes. off the skin? That's how you do it. You oh, blanch yeah. it for 10 seconds because if you do anything more than 10 seconds, uh, when you're skinning it, there's a lot of fruit pulp hmm. coming out hmm. with that. Hmm. So yeah. I didn't do that. I okay. took a desi take right. and I mixed it with the French technique. What I did was, I just finally chopped the tomatoes yeah. so fine that the tomato skins wouldn't Skin actually feel peel different. Off. No, it, I didn't peel them off. No, they, they happened, just kind of came off by themselves. No, it's actually uh. inside. You know why? Because if the skin gets off, it, if okay. it comes off, what happens is it becomes into a runny paste. Ah, and if it's a runny paste, okay. it wouldn't set on yeah, your it wouldn't oh. look. It wouldn't sort of have that... Yeah. You'll be, you, you'll be like, you know, taking a tablespoon and managing it like this. Yeah. Right now, they're one bite. So you mm. need to understand how you need to do justice to the ingredients so that it actually sticks to it. Mm, so, you know, yeah, yeah. if I think that I'm making this thing, mm. so I will think that you, I need to treat the tomatoes in such a way that mm. the end result would be this. Because right now, there are three things going on over right. here. Mm. We have boiled eggs. Mm. Then we have tomatoes that yep. have been cooked tomatoes. in Cheese. clarified butter, right. garlic, mm -hmm. and salt. That is it. But There's nothing you else. I just want to interrupt here. Mm -hmm. And you talked about peel. You know, there are certain fruits and vegetables that you should eat with the peel on. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because yes. that increases their nutritional value. Mm -hmm. Of course, like potatoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were always taking off the potatoes. Yeah. Thing. Why? Why can't we just... You wash it and scrub it properly. Yeah. It actually mm -hmm. gives you more flavor from a chef's steak also. That's the first thing. Yeah. Like you said, you wash it off and scrub it properly. Right? Yeah. And then you can have the whole thing. Why lose all the potassium and mm -hmm. all the nice minerals that and come it actually with it. So what good, are the know? veggies can you eat without peeling them? Without peeling yeah. them or with peeling them? Without, without peeling, peeling them. them. You can use cucumbers, you can polish a carrot very nicely with the muslin cloth. Uh -huh. You can... Well, that's nice. You yeah. can actually polish a carrot mm -hmm. yeah. with mm -hmm. a, muslin. a muslin cloth. Nice. And then you can take your potatoes like that. Yeah. Cabbage? Cabbage? <laughs> But is that just how it is? Exactly. <laughs> I was like, for a I second. I was giving you thinking time. Yeah, I was like, wait, wait, wait. wait. Riddle. <laughs> Cabbage you could do and yeah. um, radishes. Radishes. Mm. You don't right. need to peel right. them. But doctor, um, what about, the, there's a sort of, one feels nervous about pesticides as well. Mm. That you know, mm. you don't know what's on the peel, mm. like with an apple. Mm. Or with cabbage, mm. what if it's been sprayed with things? Is That's there a way to kind in. of, but just just with water, it's, is it enough? Yeah. This kind of pesticide-free it. No, sometimes you need to wash it with other things like mm -hmm. potassium permanganate, pinky, mm -hmm. they call it. Okay. So, uh, you need to wash them properly because uh, yes, I do have my reservations about pesticides mm. and a number of pesticides going into. Yeah. Uh, I did a whole program, in fact, on your channel on the same thing on organic food and about the in, in uh, about the insecticide mm. uh, polluting everything, even the you know. So uh, yes, that is a thing that we need to take into consideration. So there. Some but things for, can, would do well. It would do well to wash some things with pinky. Yes, pinky. Where can and you get pinky from? Pinky. Pinky can be got from, I think you can have it from any pharmacy uh -huh. or any other. And I read somewhere so, that if you put it in a vinegar bath, mm. that's also supposed to be helpful. I mean, it what? is helpful, but what happens is vinegar is acid. It changes mm. the whole texture of the ingredient. Yeah. From mm. a cooking perspective, yeah. it's I mean, a bit It would taste dicey. something different mm. right. and you wouldn't like it then. Mm. So the thing is, like when I was in culinary school, being mm. very practical about yeah. it, we did talk about organic things, but we talked about things which are grown nicely. Mm. So in Pakistan, what happens is we just go out to the vegetable vendor or someone yeah, yeah. or the other, we just go buy it mm. out, right? Yeah. Once, if you're in, a, in the restaurant business mm. or if you're a careful buyer, mm. you usually know that how that specific person who's selling his ingredient 
is mm. treating his things, right? Yes. So if I was a restaurant, I would buy my ingredient from someone I know how he treats his ingredient when it's actually in the ground. Right. So I wouldn't go just to any vendor, go out and, and go buy and buy it. It, yeah. buy it off the shelf. Because mm -hmm. the thing is, you just wash the ingredients mm. in a culinary mm. school mm. or in a chef's mm. kitchen or in a restaurant. It's highly unlikely that people would use pinky. Yes. But uh, being more careful, mm. be living in Pakistan or we the subcontinent. We could even use salt. Yeah, could, salt. The, the, the could, Himalayan yeah. salt. Mm. That sometimes works yeah. also because mm. it's a disinfectant. And no, apart no, from that, coming back to the food, because yeah. I just ate it mm -hmm. and it's delicious. Thank yeah. You. Tell me more. So then yeah. you did, you blanched, you sort of made a sort of, not a salsa. No, it's not a salsa. Salsa, salsa is raw. This is cooked. Okay. Salsa yeah. is always raw. This is cooked. Yeah. Then what we did was we took some cheddar cheese. Mm -hmm. I just you know, wrapped it around. Well, it's so cute. Through. It's like an, it's in a little swirl. So yeah. you just sort of did a strip and then you rolled it. No. I oh. rolled it and then I cut it. Oh, yeah. okay. So you make it into a roll mm -hmm. and then you cut it. You can cut herbs like that as well. Exactly. What do you yeah. call it? Chiffonade? Chiffonade. Chiffonade. Oh my close, God. Close, yeah. close, close. Cool. I read cookbooks <laughs> as well. <laughs> I thought I was going to talk about the julienne cut and... <laughs> no, we've, we've yeah. progressed from julienning. Oh and my God. Chiffonade now. Chiffonade, yeah. yeah. And then we just took some cabbage. I mean, the funny part is mm -hmm. that I ordered some lettuce. Uh-huh. Yeah. So... The guy got me cabbage. Cabbage, but, but you didn't have to peel. Yeah, no, but the thing is that, I mean, <laughs> it completely, you know, changed the recipe 15 minutes before I had to oh. come on TV. I was like, what should I do? Then I just remembered I have some mustard, I have some salt, mm. and I have some vinegar. Yeah, that's so vinegar, just, yeah. actually, you know, there are many different types of vinegar. Mm. Usually in Pakistan, people use synthetic vinegar, mm. Mm. which is Acetic actually, acid. yeah, that's not good. Mm. So I used a different form of vinegar. Mm. I kind of, you know, made this uh, mayonnaise vinegar. Mustard. But what was this mysterious vinegar? I used rice vinegar. Oh. You know, you, the, the form of yeah. vinegar you use, it changes the taste mm. also mm. of yes, the ingredient. Definitely. Because so, so when you talk about, okay, for example, if this was done in my kitchen. Mm. Yeah. So the mayonnaise, which I bought actually from the market, would be made by me. Of course. So that makes a very big difference. Mm. You know? so, so now see the layering. You boil the eggs, you cook the tomatoes, you use... You make, you make this cabbage thing, but mm. now what does the cabbage have? It has vinegar, which is bought from the store. Mm. Mm. Then if it was my own kitchen, I would have made the mayonnaise myself, which means mayonnaise has four to five more ingredients. Yes. So it would be a whole buffet you of things make going mayonnaise? on. Yeah. Uh, no. Mayonnaise is actually egg yolks and oil. Yeah, I know whip what... It up, whip it up, whip it up. I mean, I know it's about funny, that, you know. I've never made it Egg myself. yolks can take as much as oil you want to put it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? I mean... Yeah. Yolks are like, bring it on, just keep uh -huh. whipping yeah, it. And it's so good and, because yeah, when you're like pouring the oil yeah. into it, it's yeah. the, the sound changes. Yeah, and you can't put oil too much. You need no. to like, uh, you need to like, drip it in. Yeah, so uh -huh. just because you need to drizzles. air it. You hmm. air it, you drip it. It's very difficult actually. And I remember he, go, the chef goes like, move your wrist, not your hand. Move uh. your wrist, oh, not your uh -huh. hand. Because yeah, because if you move your hand, you'll get more tired. Oh. Rit the wrist has more, you know, flexibility. Oh, so it right. wasn't an arm movement, it's a wrist thing. It's a wrist thing. movement, yeah. Okay, all right. Ah, so. That's scientific. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah, then the first thing was, I remember, yes. <laughs> they go like, you have to stand on both your feet. So we have this habit of, you know, chilling out, We do, standing. and I think the daisy's thing really, yeah, like, you know, we, we act so cute, cool, oh. taking, <laughs> taking, you know, a take on the table. He's yeah, like, yeah. you know, you need to work for 12 hours in a go. You get two breaks for 30 minutes only. So the, so the earlier you start standing on both your feet, which means you're dividing your body's weight right. on both your legs, the, the more efficiently you'll work, the less tired you'll get. Ah, I'm sure you know this because MBBS is a very grueling process. I know, we, we, we do duties for about 72 hours wow. at a stretch. And yeah. that's, I mean, at any point in your life, did you really regret being a chef standing there on two feet? And <laughs> you, did, you, did you say, oh my God, I would have been a lawyer? One day, one day. I could have been a lawyer. I was, stand, I was standing there and I was like, you know, I, I was done with everything and he was happy and everyone's leaving and I'm leaving with a smile on my face and I was the only person who used to come on time, uh -huh. mm -hmm. be there happy, never never used to you know frown or anything and be like, chef, what's wrong with you? He goes like, before you leave, go clean the fridge. Like, oh my God. God. Like you look too happy. And you like, want to sort of and like, okay, put I, you I opened the fridge and you know, obviously they're like, you know, remains of yeah, yeah, food yeah. and everything yeah. and I go up to him I'm like this is the first time I'm paying in my life to clean things <laughs> he laughs at me he's like if you clean it yourself though, then only you can you know teach people can... how to clean it properly right. so that was one thing I remember that's why I do everything myself first and then I can teach people yeah, that's so that was crucial. one day mm. for like only two minutes I was like 
I wish I was home. <laughs> <laughs> but a cleaning of fridge. <laughs> no, so that, that fridge was actually, mm. you know, it, we used to age meat in that. Uh-huh. So, you know, once you age meat in oh, that, gross. you it's just like have guts and everything down there. And yeah. it wasn't pleasant side. I was like, I, I, can, I can hear him saying, What? You want me to clean this thing? <laughs> yeah. I'm the first one to be here. Like, oh my God. <laughs> so, Dr. Fazeen, are you a foodie? Do you have yes. to be a foodie yes. to be a nutritionist? No, 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 no. I'm, first of all, I'm a dietitian. Yes. And um, uh, it's not like you have to be a foodie to be a dietitian or vice versa. It's just that I love food and uh, I love eating good food. Mm. And. Um, that's why my, uh, the person who cooks at my place uh, is always under the whip because <laughs> I eat less, but I eat good. Yeah. Exactly. And it has to be the right thing, you know, mm-hmm. be the taste that I want, right. the, the cup of tea that I want yeah. in the morning. Mm-hmm. It has to be that. So, exactly. yeah, I sound like a 70-year-old army officer who's really, you know, like, I, mean, I want to have this. If, if yeah. this. thing, might as well eat it properly. Yeah, why yeah, not? Why, why do you yeah. want to just, you know, I mean, see, with me, mm. I take two meals a day. So I, yeah, I same. yeah so yeah. I take two meals a day those which is what good. breakfast yeah? and dinner those have like, to be good yeah, like which ones are good. they which ones are it's they it's actually my my eating pattern is different 12:30 i want my lunch because mm. my day starts okay. very early mm. and 7:30 i want my dinner same and the oh, problem, so no breakfast no no but I, isn't that i take wrong? a 16 hour gap no no, no it's like Zee, intermittent fasting that, that's what the, i do that's the way his body is functioning now and if it's functioning right it's suiting him then it's fine like he said intermittent fasting is in nowadays that's what i do of course we can choose the hours that that we eat at and the others okay. that we don't eat because at. there's this so, great sort of um, you know this conversation about how breakfast is really crucial and if you don't eat it is breakfast. it is crucial you know that's what that's where the whole specialty is being a dietitian mm. it's finding out what's good for you as mm. a person you exactly. know right. like all the, all these fingers are not alike not mm. everyone is alike i could i could get away with a protein breakfast and somebody else would be uh, uh, it's suitable for them to have a whole wheat breakfast so mm. or maybe a fruity breakfast mm. Mm. maybe mm. fruity breakfast is not for me although right. I'm eating healthy yes. uh, I mean nobody is going to argue with me that I'm having bananas and I'm having mm. my mangoes mm. and my and melons it's and everything yeah. and, yeah, and it's super healthy process. but mm. sometimes Mina, it does not it acts in, on your metabolism in such a way that you're not losing weight yes. mm. the sugar the fructose in the fruit mm. is interacting with your system exactly. giving the message of sugar to your thyroid gland mm. yes yeah. Mm-hmm. Which actually then, you know, sort of makes everything stick to your middle area. Oh. Okay. So it has to be different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Now, if he has figured it out for himself that he can get away with breakfast and yeah, yeah. have an early lunch around 12.30 mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it works for him, which yeah. it shows. It, it seems to so, be working. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think that, that's a pretty, uh, mm-hmm. the yeah. pretty good thing. So that's really important. That no one way of losing weight or getting fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, no, it's good not, for everybody. Exactly. So one size for all doesn't own. work. No. And so one more thing, you don't have to starve is. yourself. That's exactly. What I, yeah. exactly. Eat right, eat good food and don't yeah. starve yourself. Yes. People think that, you know, if we reduce our intake, ah. we will start losing weight. Mm. No, first of all, mm. you eat good mm. and then yes, you need to work out. I'll mm. tell you why. There's yeah. a very easy example. But wait, I just want to take a quick break because this is again a very important uh-huh. thing. Uh-huh. We were just starting to talk. Whenever we start talking about something interesting, we're going to come back because I think that people are going to be super interested in this because, you know, of course, everybody wants to be fit and everybody wants to be healthy. Yeah. And, you know, you're telling everybody to eat smart instead of starve, which is fantastic. You so we're going to take eat. a quick break and come back soon because, you know, we have all dancers on the show today. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to the coffee table. Everybody's making me laugh, <laughs> which is great, actually. So we've been talking about eating smart and eating what's right for your body. Mm-hmm. How do you know what's right for your body? That's the science, honey. That's what I do. Oh, okay. I think I'm giving you that secret. You got to make an like, appointment. Yeah, tell me, how does it... No, <laughs> well, I'm, okay. It's like you're entering a chef's kitchen and you're like, I love your dish, tell me how it's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, pay for recipe. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Let me rephrase that. Um, you know, um, people tend to have, it It seems like people have more dietary, dietary allergies now. Mm-hmm. But I'm not necessarily, I, I, I personally don't think from a layman's perspective, it's probably not new. Mm-hmm. It's just that we didn't know about it before and now we do, like lactose intolerance mm-hmm. or being sort of sensitive to gluten. Right. I mean, uh, so I don't really have the statistics on that one, but I would tell you from personal experience that it is a new thing. Okay. Um, mm. Not just food allergies for the sake of adding a lot of preservatives and a lot of um, 
chemicals and like the reason treated behind with, this. Yes, yeah. the pesticides that we just mm. talked about. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of allergies are popping up, but then there's another thing which is called intolerances, yes. and intolerances are even more than allergies. Oh, okay. And the bad part is that allergies sort of tend to pop up quickly, and you get hives or you get mm. palpitation mm. or like like uh, Chinese mm. uh, food syndrome with MSG. You right. mm. have stuff like that. Um, intolerances, uh, food intolerances, tend to wax and vein in your body, mm. give you inflammation. Mm. It's a, kind of a subliminal inflammation mm. which sort of smolders in your body right. and you're feeling tired. It's not like a bang thing on you. Mm. It's like something with smolders and you're instant. wondering what yeah. the you hell happened. You feel your day is not going mm. good. Yes, yeah. yes. You, you feel lethargic. And you know, the funny part is, Basim, mm. that these intolerances, they come up like a day or maybe two days later to what you've actually mm. oh, had. So you can't directly link it. Yes, you, so you can't really thing. say. Yes. Mm. So right. uh, the FODMAP diet, you must have heard about it. That you, no. that you. <laughs> Tell me about it. You know a lot of about his stuff. <laughs> I know. I'm, like, I'm about eating the food. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the FODMAP is actually mm. about sort of, you know, taking a few things out of your menus and mm. then later reintroducing them. So okay. then you know what is not right. agreeing with you. Okay. Uh, there are also some lab tests that tell us, but they're not very accurate. Ah. But yes, sometimes they sort of save your life. Mm. Oh. Uh, so uh, this chronic fatigue syndrome that we have, mm. a lot of it popping is coming from what you eat. You oh. are what you eat. Mm. If you're not eating proper, then uh, the intolerance will make you feel tired, will give you a groggy head. And I must tell you that a lot of mothers who are coaxing children to have breakfast and are giving them milk in the morning and are saying, mm. no, 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 you got to have finished your milk. Yeah. The, uh, uh, last, uh, every last bit of it. Yes, and your breakfast. Right. Yeah. Mm. You know, you need to be very careful because really? the child might not be performing that well at, um, mm. in the school. Mm. So you need to see, you need to watch your child, you need to have a food diary, you need to see how you react to a certain thing. It's okay. like a whole science. Right. So like in our... Um, and you have to be vigilant about it you have to sort of see how sort of food patterns are affecting your family exactly so you need to keep you a food diary an right mind. yeah and apart from that you know what i believe in is mm -hmm. from a chef you know it better mm -hmm. we're going as humans mm -hmm. we're going away from the real agricultural method yes okay yes everything is spiked yes so if you're talking about you know milk mm -hmm. milk Yes, you're getting pure milk, but what's actually happening is when that milk is actually taken from the cow, mm -hmm. the process mm -hmm. that is going at the back end, yes. yeah. those injections, yes. the, the diet the cow is yes. being given, yes. is eventually coming in your body also through the milk. Yeah. Different molecules, yeah. let's say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Likewise, I mean, I give a very simple example to people. Mm. I don't, uh, I'm not a very big fan mm. and I actually uh, tell people not to take chicken which is actually mm. farmed. Mm. 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 I mean, you're a doctor. Yeah, yeah. 15 years ago, did you hear the word cancer very commonly? No, no. No, right? Mm. But nowadays, when you talk mm. about people and how they're feeling, mm. I think one out of five people have cancer now. Mm. Mm. And no one had the idea this would happen. From Shesh's perspective, it happens why, I'll tell you. Right now, the amount of chicken consumption in our life has mm -hmm. increased on a very big A million right. fold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's easier to cook. Mm -hmm. That protein mm -hmm. is easier to cook. Mm -hmm. It's easily accessible. Mm -hmm. It is cheap. And also production methods are better. Mm -hmm. And it's just... No, 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 no. Now I'm coming back to why mm -hmm. people are ha having cancer. Mm -hmm. Every human oh, being has a cancer gene in them. Mm -hmm. Yes. By luck, mm -hmm. it gets ignited mm -hmm. and it starts spreading. What happens to the chicken when it's actually growing? Mm. A, a, a normal chicken, mm. a free-range chicken, mm. would take a year and a half yeah, yeah. to come to its optimum yes. level, and then you eat it. Yes. The chicken we're having is four, 40 days old, yeah. which is it fully grown. It can't stand on its two legs. Exactly. So the injection you're actually putting in the chicken, oh, wow. what happens is it increases the amount of Growth. Yes. Right, right. So the growth but, hormones are increasing. But speaking of unnatural practices in food, <laughs> you know, I read, there was an, I, see, I saw an Al Jazeera report about yeah. how there is a, a burger restaurant in San Francisco and the chef is actually a robot. Hmm. And apparently the burgers are just fine. Hmm. Well, how do you feel about robots? Automatons in what the did kitchen. You, what did you say? Apparently they're just fine. Like the taste Fine is good. not what you have to give the customer. Yeah. Fine is... Just a fast food burger. Mm. Yeah. If you're giving food, it's the yeah. experience and it's the human touch you need. Mm. 
Mm. Nothing can replace that the human ever. touch. You know why? Because I mean, that doc uh, we would Google a disease and the Google exactly, would be our doctor. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. we still have doctors. Or yeah. robots that do surgery because that's also that's, a thing. That's robotic surgery is different. It's it different, is guided yeah. by a doctor. Yeah. A you doctor. Know? There's still a yeah. human yeah. being there's behind a doctor, it. There, there's yeah. a human behind every machine. Yeah. And the day the, day the machine comes before yeah. the human, that's the day we're not needed in the society anymore. Quite right. It's quite scary. That's apocalypse. Stich mm. I'm telling it's, it's you. It's like iRobot. Yeah. I mean, statistically... Because people will sit at home, they'll yeah. starve, and then there will be a, glo uh, a global chaos. Why? Because mm. robots will take over, <laughs> people will be hungry, mm. and, yeah. and if someone's hungry, that's where chaos breaks in the society. Plus the yeah. element of surprise is almost gone. It's yeah, not the creativity of I mean, cooking. Yes. The, simple, yeah. the simple thing is if you go to a restaurant you love. Yes. I mean, you might love a restaurant in Lahore, you might yeah. love a restaurant in Lahore. Mm. What happens is when you go over here, you have the normal menu. Mm. But mm. then you have the daily menu. Mm. That's where the right. chef comes in. Yeah. Yes. So if you're actually a robot, you won't have that menu over mm. there. Mm. And you know what? We say that chefs do good. But you know, till, the 19, till 1910, there wasn't any culinary school, mm -hmm. good culinary school. Because it was just sort of done at home, so the it chefs wasn't were, a the, thing. The, the chefs were learning from their grandmothers mm. and the, the grandmothers always cook with love. Right. Yeah. And the Cooking recipe for a tastes is good different. if you love yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. If yes. I love yes. my profession, then only you'll be like, yeah. yes, I love what yes. you made. Yes, yeah. passionate about it. Robots cannot love, humans yeah. can love and love mm. does transfer into food, does transfer into medicine and even if you're talking, if you love what yeah. you're doing, yeah. then you have a smile on your face. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't smile. You'll be like, okay, fine, it's a job. I'm going to come in, go out and bye-bye. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, very true. Very true. And quite particularly for food because the experience of sharing food between mm -hmm. people is really, it's just an incredible, it's a profound bonding experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. Between yes. people yes. as well. Food yes. brings you closer. Yeah. Yes. That's what, I mean, I mean. It's I'll, something which is common to all humans. Common yeah. to all humans and I'll give you an example. See, we're friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if I call you over to my place mm. and I cook for you... We'll become best friends. Of course. Exactly. We will be your yeah. best friend. Yeah. It started with an egg. <laughs> <laughs> and then it went on for eternity. So that's how it is. So, you know, I mean, if you, if you call someone over, yeah. if, you, if you order for them, that's different. But if you put in effort, mm. they will be happy. Mm. So, for example, if you go to a restaurant mm. and you see the chef... Mm. Okay, fine. Let me cut you over there. Yeah. There are two types of restaurants. But speaking of chefing, like, I, I keep interrupting you yeah. because I'm just curious. Yeah. But what is your favorite recipe? Do you have one? Is it was it your granny's recipe? Okay, there are two recipes. Yeah. Okay, Nihari made by my grandmother. Wow. Okay. And this Good Peruvian one. dish called ceviche. <gasps> ceviche is so delicious. Excellent. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. So delicious. You know, I went to sort of Scafa and I, and I learned how to make it. Ah. That's and where she's getting all of you. Yeah, you're getting your complex, dude. <laughs> I learned how to make it. But when Frazine and I come over to eat, <laughs> you will make a ceviche. Of course. If I find good white fish, which is so This is usually. true. Yeah. This That's is true. the problem. Yeah. yeah and if you like, were back in Karachi, hmm. God, we'll go to Karachi were. for it. Done. <laughs> 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 just go wherever the food takes us. Oh, <laughs> oh, well, on that note, thank you so much, both of you, for thank being you. on the show. Thank I think you. this was a fascinating conversation. Thank you for inviting Delicious us. Delicious eggs. <laughs> a real you. treat to be able to eat on the show. Sort of multitasking, <laughs> two of my favorite things. Chatting and eating at the same time. Yes. Thank you guys for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. We might send you a recipe. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us and we'll see you next time. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.